presentation of our data science capstone project, which is Meteor Bakery. Um, I'll start by a short introduction, as the work behind this project was mostly done by three people, um, which is, there we go, uh, Alex, uh, who's a neuroscientist who you might find traveling around the world if he's not analyzing any data set that he could get his hands on. Uh, then there's Burkhardt, who has a PhD in uh, microbiology and is either looking for data patterns or an opportunity to get in or on the water. And uh, I'm Fabian, I'm a social psychologist, and I like agile work methods and sailing, and obviously also data, because I think that's why we're all here, because of the slightly nerdy relationship. Um, well, anyway, today I want to talk together with you about uh, food waste. Um, food waste is quite a big problem. Um, in Germany, we waste 1.7 million tons of bread alone uh, per year. Um, part of that uh, is 12 to 19 percent of any bakery's production that is returned, so not even sold and basically thrown away. Um, this whole bread waste is equivalent to roughly 398 hectares of farmland, which is roughly the size of Mallorca, picture here for size comparison. And uh, said bread's production emits about 2.46 million tons of greenhouse gases, which is almost as much as the whole of Iceland emitted in 2019. So we have quite an environmental problem at our hands. But on the other hand, underproduction and sellouts are a problem for bakeries as well, because that means missed sales and also unhappy customers, because who goes to a bakery to buy rolls if you can't buy rolls there? So how much bread we are going to sell in advance, we can avoid food waste, we can reduce financial loss for bakeries, and also bakeries could staff more precisely, avoiding over or underworked employees. So how can we know how much bread we're going to sell? In our project, uh, we want to look at two things. First, the calendar. We're wondering, can we just use last Monday's uh, last Monday sales data to forecast today's sales? And for example, what happens on the weekends? Do families, for example, buy more rolls? And since there are no commuters or employees ha around having their lunch break, what happens at that point? So it should be a good idea to have a look at the calendar, but is that sufficient? We don't think so. So for our project, uh, we got in contact with a stakeholder, Meteolytics, uh, who uh, that's a company improving sales forecasts also for bakeries, uh, mostly by using weather data. And uh, yeah, we thought that was really cool. And we wanted to do the same and follow that path and see which influence does weather data have on sales and uh, which weather features, for example, are most important, temperature, rain, wind, and so on. And to look at all that, Meteolytics was uh, so kind and provided us with a huge data set on bread sales and weather, and uh, that uh, will be introduced to you by Burkhardt now. Thanks, Fabian, for your introduction. <laughs> so let me go straight into our data then. It comprises of daily sales data in euros from 2012 to 2021 from three branches in the Vienna region. One metro station branch, one city center branch, and one train station branch. The sales data was additionally split up into five different product categories. Sales from brown bread, wheat rolls, cakes, convenient pastries, and savory snacks. Thus, in total, we had sales data for three branches and five product categories. Additionally to our sales data, we had daily weather data for the same period. This included the temperature, whether it rained or snowed, humidity, and some other features, like, for example, pressure, wind, etc. In addition, we created features such as next day's weather or weather shifts from one to the next day from this data. And let me now give you a short visual impression of our sales data. From this plot, you can already see that the turnover was different between the three branches with most sales occurring in the metro station branch, while smallest turnover was encountered in the city center branch. I would also like to draw your attention to the break in sales data in early 2020 due to the first corona lockdown in Vienna. Since the sales profiles changed drastically after the onset of corona, we decided to only use data up until the end of 2019 for our forecasts. 
Apart from the differences in sales for the different branches, two seasonalities were striking in the sales data. Firstly, a yearly pattern exemplified for the year 2017 in the graph on the left-hand side with a dip, dip in sales during summer and winter months. We also observed differences in sales for weekends compared to weekdays. With these seasonalities in mind, I now hand over to Alex, who will introduce you to the models we built during our project. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, so next we went on to do some modeling. How did we do that? Um, first, we always restricted our sales forecast to the next seven days. Secondly, due to the many differences between branches and products, we always made separate forecasts for each branch product combination. Then finally, to evaluate model performance, we used the so-called mean absolute percentage error, which estimates the average prediction error in percent. We then tested various different models using this strategy. As a baseline, we first established a so-called naive seasonal drift model, which simply uses the sales of the preceding week as a proxy for the sales on the next seven days. This model already showed good forecasting performance and only over or underestimated the actual sales by about 17%. We then tested several more advanced models against our baseline, including linear regression, temporal fusion transformer, and a variety of decision tree-based ensemble techniques. Among these ensemble techniques, we then finally identified light GBM as a promising candidate to beat our baseline model. Indeed, after several optimization steps, light GBM reached an average prediction error of about 14%, thus outperforming our baseline by three percentage points when averaged across all branch product combinations. In this model, we only included temporal features as predictors, such as the sales of the preceding week or information about the month. As the next step, we then also implemented a light GBM model that, in addition to the temporal features, also used a variety of weather features as predictors. Including these weather features into the model further reduced the prediction error, but only by about 0.3%. However, this effect still made up about 10% of the total improvement compared to baseline. The differential contribution of the temporal and weather features was also reflected in the relative feature importance. As you can see in this graph, again, temporal features contributed most to the model predictions. Specifically, the turn over seven days ago was most important, showing a relative feature importance of nearly 50% relative to all other features, followed by the day of the week, public holidays, and the turn over one year ago. The mean daily temperature ranked on uh, reached rank five, followed by the seasonal deviation and snowfall, both of which showed a relative feature importance of nearly 3%. So while all these contributions were overall small, weather features did contribute and they did so to varying degrees depending on the location of the branch. As you can see in this graph, for example, we found differences in the top three ranked weather features between branches. Um, for all branches, temperature turned Always, to, always turned to be able to be pretty important. However, while snowfall was among the top three weather features for the metro and the train station branch, we found rainfall to be among the top three weather features only for the city center branch. Moreover, we would also like to highlight at this point that all these importances reflect feature contributions on a global scale, i.e. across the whole year. However, it is likely that the relative importance of weather features strongly varies with yearly season. For example, snowfall may have a much more prominent effect during winter, since it almost exclusively occurs during that season. Finally, um, we calculated the yearly prediction error in euro to also examine the forecasting performance on a financial scale. To this end, we first calculated the absolute differences between the actual sales and the model predictions, and then summed up all the resulting individual errors across the whole year. Next, we summed up these yearly total errors across all branch product combinations to get an estimate of the yearly summed error in euro. In doing so, we found that light GBM reduced the yearly summed error from about 310 to about 270,000 euro compared to baseline. Finally, we also assessed the extent to which this yearly summed error was either due to over or underestimation. Interestingly, we found that about 70% of the yearly summed error produced by the light GBM model was due to errors underestimating the sales. Thus, currently, our light GBM model shows a pronounced bias towards underestimating the actual sales. With this, I hand over again to Fabian, which will present the main conclusions. Right. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alex and Burkhardt. Um, as we could see from uh, these two slides, uh, yeah, and this one, um, overall, uh, we save about uh, 43.5 thousand euros per year uh, with our current model uh, compared to uh, our baseline model. And um, yeah, to further sum up our talk, um, <clears throat> we can see that our model is more precise than the baseline, uh, improving prognosis about 3.1%. Um, about 10% of that improvement stems from uh, including weather data. And while these improvements seem rather small, they do amount up to the set 43.5 thousand euros per year, saving if we relate them to the numbers that, uh, that we looked at uh, at the beginning, saving potentially 20,000 hectares of land and over 123,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions each year. Um, furthermore, we could see that the different branches are affected differently by the weather, uh, which leads us to our outlook. Um, to further improve the model, uh, we suggest a more fine-grained analysis investigating feature importance for each product in each bakery and probably also differing by season, and think that would be quite useful for more precise sales forecasts. Um, furthermore, um, it's worth mentioning that we uh, had turnover data here, and thus didn't know about actual food waste or sellout. So our model, for example, assumes that the turnover that the bakery makes is not capped by sellouts, um, which obviously is quite an assumption. Um, but yeah, so turnover data is not <clears throat> optimal for truly solving the problem uh, at hand. So getting our hands on production data might actually further improve prognosis. And um, yeah, with this, uh, it's time that we conclude our talk. So. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you particularly to Meteolytics and Rabea for uh, the data and for working with us. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you in the breakout rooms and discussing our project. Uh, 